I mean, it, 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 it is a terrible cliche, but I mean, I was so completely surprised and absolutely thrilled. No, well, you deserve it. You definitely deserve to be recognised in this way. And you were an editor of Blue Peter for an astonishing 26 years. Like a dinosaur. <laughs> And I suppose it's, it became part of your life, and, the, and Blue Peter, well, you're part of Blue Peter's life as well. It's an extraordinary relationship. Well, I, f I, I found it awfully easy to switch off. Um, and the marvellous thing about a magazine programme is that you can't get bored because the world's your oyster. I'm just looking at some fantastic footage. There you are, Biddy. Um, oh I don't know what year it was. You probably could tell me. Um, you were known as being a formidable boss, that's for sure. Oh dear. And your high heels could be heard. Um, clinking around the studio. Some fond memories, no doubt, right? Mm. I know that you were instrumental in many of the, the things which still exist, for example, the badges. That was your idea, wasn't it? Well, it was, I had a marvellous team and I had Edwin yeah. Barnes and Rosemary Gill and together we, we sort of complemented each other. And are you surprised by just how popular those badges still are? I mean, it's an honour to have a gold badge. I, I believe you have one and so does well, the Queen. Well, I mean, that was another amazing thing. When I left, they did give me one, but the great thing about the badges was that they weren't giveaways. They had to win them. Yep. And what about the appeals? Again, another fabulous idea. They're still going strong today. And you raised millions of pounds, Jack. Well, all from rubbish. Uh, rubbish and bring and buy sales. But the bringers were just as important as the buyers, of course. How about the pets? I mean, that's been a great institution, hasn't it, a Blue Peach? I know you were getting behind that. Um, did you have a favourite pet? Was there one that you liked more than the other, perhaps? Well, the, the, uh, I'm very fond of dogs, anyway. And um, this is one of your famous dogs, wasn't it, Petra? Petra. I think. Yes, yes. But she, she, um, uh, we had uh, a, a marvelous moment when we decided <laughs> it would be a good thing if she had puppies. And oh, so, and then someone had to look after them. And I suppose what was great about the animals is that children. Look at this amazing an elephant. Oh, Lulu! I can't yes, oh, God, I've seen that so many times. Really? <laughs> But I suppose it's great for children at home who couldn't have a, a dog or a cat that or whatever. That was the idea. But they could have one through the program, which is brilliant. Ab ab absolutely. And when um, we decided she ought to have puppies, we had a sort of canine Mr. Universe in the studio. And we said, well, you know, this is Rex, or his back legs are a bit weak, and uh, this is Rover, and he's got a very long tail, so he <laughs> wouldn't do. And we had a letter from a mother who said she was so disgusted, she sent her 14-year-old son out of the room. Oh, wow. Because we, was, we were discussing mating the dog. Oh, goodness. Um, now, I know it's still going strong today, as is so, so much more of children's TV, but do you think there's magic that's lost in terms of what you produced back then? Do you think? Because nowadays children have smartphones, iPods, 24-hour mm. TV. Do you think well, that they're growing up too young these days? No. I mean, if you're eight, you've only lived eight years. Uh, I think the, the, the problem is that, um, in a way, is the technology is, is changing everything. And it must be very, very difficult now to do audience research mm -hmm. because um, you know, children are able to, to watch even tiny ones. Yeah. They're so good with the technology. Well,